Chapter 1. A Woman's Sex Life Can Be Just As Fulfilling As a Man's Nobody wants to struggle in silence, but so many women do. Come As You Are is the perfect read for any woman who is often confused by her sexuality. Perhaps you're worried that your anatomy isn't normal, or you're terrified that you don't want sex as much as your partner and they're going to leave you for someone who is more sexually active. The biggest pat on the back you can imagine comes in the realization that you're totally normal. And do you know why you're normal? Because you're different. Empowering women to grab hold of their sexuality and use it in their unique way is what this book is all about. Wouldn't it be boring if every woman was the same? Why would anyone want to be the same as anyone else anyway? Be different, embrace it, and learn how to understand that you need to enjoy sex without worrying what is supposedly normal. Who gets to decide what is normal anyway? Nobody. You're perfectly fine as the person you are, and all you need to do is realize that for yourself. All women need to learn how their bodies work, what sexuality is, and use all the hints and tips in this summary to develop their sexuality to the point where they're genuinely as orgasmic as they could ever hope to be. That's all within your reach, even if you don't believe it right now. There is no normal and abnormal female body. Every woman is unique and special in her own way. Chapter 2 if men can do it, surely women can do it just as easily. Emily Nagoski, Ph.D., has sex-related questions thrown at her on an almost daily basis. The stories and questions she has heard over the years have led her to one very truthful realization. Men and women are similar in many ways, but wildly different in others. Women often worry whether they're normal or not, having heard something on TV or read something in a magazine that has led them to wonder whether they're broken. They worry that they're never going to have a fulfilling sex life. The problem is, TV and magazines lie to us in so many ways. We see women having easy orgasms on TV, but in reality, only 30% of women orgasm with intercourse. The rest, they either struggle or never come via intercourse at all. Most women don't reach orgasm, yet many feel as if they've failed if they don't hit the big O. Many women worry about this because of what society tells them. Many years ago, medicine told the world that sex for women was the same as for men, only slightly less mind-blowing. Just because men have orgasms very reliably, it was assumed women could too. This is a huge myth and leads many women to panic because it's not happening easily for them. The truth is that women don't reach orgasm as easily as men, and that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with them anatomically. It's simply that men and women are uniquely different from one another. I am done living in a world where women are lied to about their bodies, where women are objects of sexual desire but not subjects of sexual pleasure. Emily Nagoski, Ph.D. Both men and women experience desire, arousal, and orgasm. Still, the route towards that final big O, if that destination is ever reached, is unique and works entirely differently. Understanding their route gives women the power to understand their sexuality. Knowledge is power. Chapter 3. The Quick Anatomy Lesson Everyone Needs Most women have grabbed a hand mirror and tried to have a look at what lies between their legs before, but few know the names for each particular part. Most women come to learn about their genitalia via masturbation, and everyone does this differently. In medieval times, the female genitalia was referred to as the pudendum. This word came from the Latin term for to be ashamed. So from the earliest point in history, women were taught to be ashamed of their genitalia. This needs to stop. Masturbation is an entirely normal and healthy thing for a woman to do. Female genitalia and male genitalia are not that different. They're either inside or outside. Both sets of genitalia come from the same origin. It's simply a blast of hormones at around six weeks gestation that informs whether a baby will become male or female. 
the female clitoris is the equivalent of the head of the male penis. They are both packed with nerve endings and a veritable feast of pleasure. The problem? Most women don't know where their clitoris is, and even fewer men do. Why were female genitalia referred to as something to be ashamed of when they come from the same place as male genitalia? Contrary to popular belief, the hymen doesn't differentiate between a woman who is a virgin and one who isn't. This is because not all women are born with a hymen in the first place, and some can be so thin that they break with something as simple as riding a bike. The problem is that certain cultures look for the hymen as proof of a woman's virginity, perhaps before marriage. If that woman was never born with a hymen or broke during her earlier years when riding a bike or horse riding, that woman could be personally vilified. With that, her reputation is ruined. Did you know? The hymen doesn't actually disappear. It simply stretches and perforates. Chapter 4 Women go through four stages of sexual arousal. Every woman experiences sex differently, and the things that arouse them are different too. There is no one-size-fits-all answer. On each side of the vagina, there is a gland called the Bartholin's gland. During arousal, this secretes fluid and causes a woman to become wet. Many people don't realize it, but men also experience a similar type of wetness. The Cowper's gland secretes pre-ejaculate fluid. Despite that, we say that a woman gets wet and a man gets hard. The thing is, both get wet and both get hard. A woman's clitoris becomes hardened during arousal, just like the penis. During the lead-up to sex or arousal, four main stages happen to a woman. Excitement, plateau, orgasm, and resolution. In the first stage, her heart rate rises and she becomes wet. During the plateau, the vagina swells a little and opens, with contractions deep inside. Not all women reach orgasm, but for those who do, the vaginal muscles contract, her heart rate is rapid, and she breathes quickly. The final stage, resolution, is when everything returns to normal. For many women, it isn't only about what is going on during arousal that causes them to want sex, but what is going on inside their brains. That means they need to feel good about their body, trust the person, and the surroundings have to be right. This isn't correct all the time, but both men and women are governed by either SES or SIS. SES, Sexual Excitation System notices things that cause sexual excitement. SIS, sexual inhibition system, notices threats and distractions. Women need to feel comfortable and in the right place for sex. If this isn't right, they won't be able to enjoy the experience. Chapter 5. Whether a woman deems herself to be particularly emotional or not, the emotional side of the brain controls her sex life. It's no surprise that most of the factors women need to feel comfortable and aroused are linked to love, security, and commitment. When a woman feels secure in her relationship and happy with her partner, she can relax, avoid negative thoughts, and be more open to trying new things. Most women need to experience a mixture of both romantic and erotic sexual cues to feel like they want sex, but none of this is of any use if that woman doesn't feel good about her own body in the first place. Emotions are tunnels. You have to go all the way through the darkness to get to the light at the end. Emily Nagowski, Ph.D. A woman's external circumstances dictate whether she is responsive to sexual arousal or not. All of this depends upon perception. Dr. Nagoski highlights the example of being tickled. If that person is in a good mood, they will probably find the tickling funny, maybe even pleasurable, and may lead to arousal. However, if they're angry with the person doing the tickling, they're more likely to feel even more annoyed by the tickling. Two main situations can affect how responsive a woman is to sexual arousal, love and stress. Both have different reactions. Love will make you feel safe, but stress will make you feel in danger. A stressed woman will not want sex and is more likely to freeze or feel under pressure. 
On the other hand, a woman in love is more likely to experience a more significant amount of sexual enjoyment. For that reason, focus upon reducing the stress in your life and talking about the things that are bothering you. By doing that, you'll release any pent-up negativity that is holding you back from fully embracing the joy in your life at that moment. A woman in love is more likely to have an active and fulfilling sex life compared to a stressed woman. Chapter 6. Does Culture and Society Affect What Sex Means to Women? Both men and women are sold on the idea of a sex-positive world, but the truth is the opposite. Women are made to believe that they are dirty or not enough. While they may not believe it entirely, it is still there, in the back of their mind, slamming the brakes on sexual enjoyment. This is a huge issue within society and something we need to focus on stamping out. Women are also highly self-critical. Society tells women to criticize and never celebrate themselves. Doing so brings a tremendous amount of judgment. It's also impossible to be sexually confident and optimistic when the weight of self-criticism is dragging a woman down. Women are pre-programmed to be body critical. This does nothing for sexual enjoyment. Both men and women think they know a lot about sex, but they only know what society wants them to know. Facts and statistics don't particularly back up the messages. Instead, they're backed up by ideas and opinions. Women are told they're a slut if they enjoy sex, but that's entirely wrong. These false ideas can drastically reduce the enjoyment a woman has in her sex life and how she sees herself individually. Women rarely accept themselves as they are, but that has to change. When a woman doesn't accept herself as she is, she is damaging her sexual pleasure. Accepting yourself will bring you health, happiness, and increased sexual enjoyment. The answer? Turn everything on its head. Replace negativity with positivity, be kind rather than critical, and accept rather than push away. Dr. Nagoski suggests a woman should stand in front of a mirror and take off all her clothes, really looking at what she sees. She should then make a list of the things she likes, ignoring the things she doesn't. By doing this, she's able to push aside the things society says she should think and feel and focus on what is going on inside her own head. Chapter 7. Why Female Reactions to Sexual Activities Don't Tell the Whole Story Most people assume that when a woman is wet, she is ready for sex. That is not true. While men get hard when aroused and ready for sex, women's genitalia can say one thing but mean another. A woman may be lubricated, but her mind might be elsewhere. This is called arousal non-concordance and covers the relationship between the brain and the genitals. The brain notices everything around it, and it's trying to work out whether it's a threat or whether it's something it likes. On the other hand, the genitals notice things that are supposed to be sexually arousing and instantly think about sex. With that, the genitals start to get ready for sex, but the brain hasn't caught up yet. This is why some women are wet but don't want to have sex. The best way to tell whether a woman is aroused isn't by noticing what her genitals are doing, but instead looking for nonverbal signs. These include shallow breathing, flushed cheeks, and the words she is saying. It's also true that orgasm doesn't just involve the genitals, but also the brain. It is a release of sexual tension, but that tension doesn't just build up inside the vagina. It also builds up inside the mind. To have more orgasms, women need to reduce their sexual breaks and find emotional safety. For instance, feeling safe with a partner and trusting them completely will allow a woman to relax and therefore feel more aroused. Emily Nagoski also suggests trying lubrication, which has been known to increase the value of a woman's sex life drastically. Not only does this lube make sex feel better, but it also reduces the chances of pain and friction, two things which some women fear and therefore cause them to slam on their sexual reaction breaks. Most women don't orgasm via intercourse alone and require some clitoral stimulation. 
Changing positions to ensure the clitoris gets a look in is a good idea, but women should also feel comfortable talking to their partners about what they like to reach the unique big O much easier. Despite that, it isn't always the destination that should be the goal. Learn to enjoy sex as a whole and don't just rush to reach climax. Conclusion Sex for men and women is different, no matter which way you look at it. Despite that, women deserve to enjoy their sex lives as much as men. The fallacy that men always want sex and women often tolerate it needs to be pushed to one side. The truth is that women can have a satisfying sex life and that they deserve it, too. All that needs to happen is more focus on enjoyment of sex as a whole and less focus on rushing towards orgasm. Understanding female anatomy and how it works gives women empowerment and allows them to discover their likes and dislikes. It's also essential to reach a place in life which isn't influenced by society and cultural views on the female body and sex. Women are not dirty if they enjoy sex, and they're not frigid if they're not responding to every single sexual stimulus out there either. Every woman is different, every woman is beautiful, and every woman needs to understand both of those things to unlock her own sexual power. Because sex is such a profoundly personal and private thing, every woman needs to take the time to understand the things that turn her on as an individual. There is no one-size-fits-all answer, but her partner needs to be understanding and communicative to help her feel comfortable and secure, both inside and outside the bedroom. Her external situations, e.g. her environment and thoughts, play such a massive part in how she feels from day to day. Try this. Take off all your clothes and stand in front of the mirror. Look at all the things you like about yourself, avoiding the things you don't like. Could you make a list and do it daily? Try adding lube into your sex life. Be aware of your sexual breaks, i.e. the things which cause you to feel less than aroused. Then do your best to reduce them and increase the number of things that cause you to feel desire.